Here, you're welcome. Welcome to the service of worship here at First Presbyterian Church. It's great to have you all here. And uh, when I say you all, I'm being kind of generous this morning. Um, but it is great to have you. If you're joining us via Zoom this morning, welcome. It's good to have you here as well. And if you're joining us a little bit later on our uh, YouTube channel, welcome as well. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of God as we uh, pray the prayer of preparation and listen to our prelude. Praise the Lord. Let us let the name of the Lord be renowned throughout the earth now and forever. Let us, let us worship, worship the Lord, Lord our God. God. Now please stand for hymn number eight.
Let us confess our sins to the one who sacrificed for us and waits in mercy to forgive. Let us pray. Almighty God, you answer our prayers, even though we sometimes pray with the haughty spirit. You continue to bless us, even though we ignore those in need. Forgive us, we pray, and turn us towards you for the, for the sake, sake of, of Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ, who is our high priest, made himself a sacrifice once and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Therefore, be reconciled to God and do all things for the glory of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The peace of Christ be with you. Also with you. With you. see anyone who would fit the uh, traditional category of young person this morning. Lots of young and spirit people, but um, for the children's sermon today, I was going to talk about this. Um, I'm going to. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is a picture of a uh, I don't know, with the glare and everything, I don't know if you can tell. It's a picture of like a B-26 bomber, right? Which is the type of airplane that my dad flew back in World War II. He was stationed in England and uh, flew, I can never remember whether he flew the night raids or the day raids, but the American Air Force would fly one of those times and then the British would fly the other and they were constantly um, in an attack mode against the, the Third Reich, right? And uh, he would tell uh, both amazing and horrifying stories of his, of, of his experience there. And I was just going to share with the, the young people how dangerous uh, that military service was. Because even though he was often high above what was going on on the ground, there were plenty of people trying to shoot him down. And, you know, and, and, and he it was not unusual. He was the, 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 the captain of his, of his group and they would lose 40 or 50 percent of the planes on a given on a given raid so it was extremely dangerous and uh, one time he got sh uh, he got hit by a, a fighter plane and his plane he had to land his plane um, over the English Channel with like one engine and crashed in a potato field and uh, the steering mechanism broke and went through his hand 
So he won the Purple Heart. I'm extremely proud of him for his, his service. And I was just going to remind people that uh, um, this is Veterans Day weekend and that there are so many people who, um, who have served uh, both thanklessly and with great uh, bravery um, and, and that it, it is a shame that those people get lost in, in, in the cracks sometimes. I think one of the real tragedies of, of uh, American society is that we do not honor our veterans and take care of them better than we do. So if you know a veteran or see a veteran, take this time to, to thank them for their service and advocate on their behalf uh, that they are taken better care of because they have indeed fought for our freedoms and um, our, our, our way of life. I don't want to get too cliche-ish here and run the flag up a pole or anything, but I, I sincerely believe all that. So honor, honor those people who have served us. Let's move on to our, our next part of the service. O oh God, wash, anoint us with your word of truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The New Testament lesson comes from Mark chapter 12, verses 38 through 44, in the New Testament, uh, page 49, the Bible in your pew. As he taught, he said, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and to have the best seats in the synagogue and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses for the sake of a, uh, What's your widows' name? homes and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive a great condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich, rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and went and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on.
post case delicious. Thank you. That was lovely. Today's Old Testament lesson and the text for our sermon comes from the Psalms. It's Psalm 23. It's on page 501 of your pew Bible if you'd like to read along, and it's right here in the bulletin as well. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. God leads me beside still waters. She restores my soul. God leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Say, have you heard the latest sheep joke? It goes like this. A sheep goes into a liquor store and starts looking around. One of the staff walks up and asks the sheep if she needs any help. Well, I'm looking for a very special bottle of wine, says the sheep. Very good, says the staff person. We have the biggest selection in the area. Would you like a Cabernet Sauvignon? Uh, no, thank you, says the sheep. Maybe a Zinfandel. No, a Chardonnay, perhaps. Sounds lovely, but no. And on and on the exchange goes for 10 minutes. The staff person names every varietal and vintage in the store, but none of them are what the sheep came in for. Finally, the staff person says, I guess I've been wasting your time, Ms. Sheep. Do you already know what type of wine you'd like to buy? Oh, yes said the sheep pleasantly, a lamb brusco. A lamb brusco. So now it is the week after last week. It was a week that for many of us felt like we took a hard fall or we lost a loved one. And to be honest, some of us feel like we've been stuck in the valley of the shadow of too much. Too much work, too much stress, too much news, too many hard decisions. If you're like me, you may have had one of those weeks where your main prayer was, Lord, can I just go back to bed and try again later? But Psalm 23 offers us peace and comfort in the middle of that chaos. And not only that, it challenges us to go from receiving God's care to becoming sharers of that care for others. I'm going to highlight a few of the verses. Number one, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Let us, as they say these days, get real. Have you ever gone shopping at the grocery store? I'm sure you have. So you know there's always something to want. So what does it mean when we say, I shall not want? It's not that we never feel like we want things. Lord knows I've wanted a nap a lot lately. But what this verse is saying is that God provides everything that we truly need. The good shepherd knows what is best for us, even if it's not extra fries at at McDonald's or the frozen gourmet pizzas at the co-op, because I know my audience. When we realize that God is the one who fills fills our real needs, we can become more generous with what we have, not just physically, but emotionally too. When you are filled with God's love and provision, you just don't keep it to yourself. You share it. Here's an old camp song I learned. I wonder if you've heard it too. And when I say old, I mean it's as old as the Avery and Marsh songbook. Love is something if you give it away. Do you know this? 
Love is something if you give it away, give it away, give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. It's just like a magic penny. Hold it tight and you won't have any. Lend it, spend it, you'll have so many. They'll roll all over the floor. Who said that every Sunday isn't Stewardship Sunday? Verse number two, God makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. God leads us to peaceful places of rest. I don't know about you, but I've often thought of those green pastures as something from a nice little vacation brochure. Come rest in our serene green pastures where everything is calm and peaceful. Sometimes, though, I lie on the couch and I still can't rest. There's always that little voice going, did you lock the door? Do you have enough milk for tomorrow? What was the name of that actor in the movie you saw last week? But God's still waters aren't just about physical rest. They're about soul-level restoration. You know that kind of rest where you stop checking your phone every 10 minutes rest? Maybe not. Now, I'm not saying we all can't take naps this afternoon, but there's something more. The soul rest God offers is deeper than catching up on our favorite shows. And here's the challenge. God doesn't just lead us to green pastures for us to enjoy alone. We're invited to help others find the same peace. And I'm not talking about offering up your favorite stress relief playlist. I know that's a thing. That might help. But what I'm really talking about is helping people find the peace that passes understanding, the kind of peace that is a reflection of the good shepherd in us. Number three, God restores my soul. God indeed works at the deepest level, restoring our souls. And if you've ever had one of those weeks where you felt like a soul vacuum cleaner just sucked out all of your energy, you know exactly what this means. Sometimes, especially in these post-election, post-pandemic days, it feels like life has a way of draining us dry. And then we try to fill up on whatever we can think might restore us, maybe a giant cup of coffee, a chocolate bar, or two or three, or another hour of scrolling through social media. But none of those things are really soul rest. God offers true restoration, the kind that heals wounds, and gives us the strength to face another day. It's like the hem says, there is a balm in Gilead. And as we are restored, we are called to help others. You know that feeling when someone says just the right thing at just the right time, and it feels like they've thrown you a life preserver? We can be those life preservers to others. A little word of encouragement goes a long way. Number four, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. This verse is about walking through the darkest times. And let me tell you, some days, some weeks, it feels like life's valleys are really long and steep. You know those days when you wake up and think, can I just skip tomorrow? Or at least fast forward? But here's the comforting part. We walk through the valley with God. And God is not the kind of shepherd who leaves us behind and says, you're on your own, good luck now. She walks with us through the darkest of times, holding us close. And even though we might be afraid, we stand firm in her presence. Sometimes I think we all have a little bit of the valley of the shadow of death going on inside our own minds and hearts. Maybe you've got fears that are making the days feel endlessly long. But again, the blessed thing is when we walk through the valley, God is with us. Psalm 
So when we remember that, we can take a moment to realize that we're also God's hands and feet in this community and in this world, and we are surrounded by people and creatures who are like the subject of the theme song from Friends. Well, it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year, but I'll be there for you. Yes, this is that sermon that says, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and start all over again but with a little more subtlety than that. For instance, I know that burnout and compassion fatigue are real things. Perhaps we're not supposed to talk about them in church. It's like pro basketball players who practice load management. Have you heard that term before? Load management? That is, they rest for a certain number of games each season which is smart, but can be really irksome for the fans who pay a lot of money to see those players play. We need to find the balance. Life and service are so often about finding the balance. In this case, the balance between giving and resting, service and restoration, helping others and recharging our spiritual, physical, and emotional batteries, and helping others find that balance too. Now you might be thinking, but there are people in need right now and their needs don't lessen just so we can take a little rest and relaxation. And you'd be right. But that's why it's good to be a part of something bigger than just yourself. It's better to share the load and to develop ministries that can keep going even when we can't. So, doctor's orders. So after a week like last week, take a little downtime. Take a deep breath or two or three. Really practice that self-care regimen you've been meaning to get into. But then, get back to carrying the easy yoke that Jesus tells us to share. Do those Jesus-like things that help people know that God loves them. Feed them. Protect them. Defend them. Connect with them. Shelter them. Befriend them. Give them a magic penny or two. A little later that same day, the same sheep walks into a garden center and starts looking around. The staff person on duty asks her what she's interested in buying. And she says, I'd like to get a Christmas tree, please. Flocked. Amen. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator creator of of heaven and earth, and and believe believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only only Son, Son, our Lord, Lord, who was conceived conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered suffered under Pontius Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He He descended to the the dead. dead. On the third day he rose again. He He ascended into into heaven. heaven and is seated at the the right hand hand of the Father, and and will come come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Holy Holy Catholic Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please stand stand and sing uh, verses one to two, one and, one to, yeah, one and two of, him 625 how great they are
seated. All right. Let's see what's in the covenant box. All right, it's another picture. Can y'all tell what this is? What? Uh, no, that's a really good guess. It's a turnip. Thank you. A gold star over here for the kings. It's a turnip. What is, this is, this is congregation participation time. So what is that saying about turnips that you all know? They look like hot air, yes. Yes, we learned that in kindergarten. Um, what can't you do to a turnip? You can't get blood out of it. Thank you. Goodness, had to work hard for that one. You can't get blood out of a turnip, and what does that mean? There's only so much you can do. There's only so much you can ask of people, all that kind of thing. This makes me think of our nominating committee. <laughs> because they have been working really hard about and asking nominees, uh, potential nominees, for our um, pastor nominating committee. And as I followed the, uh, the conversation through the email, people are saying yes, and I'm very excited about that. But the, the work of the nominating committee is not done because, as you know, with the new year will come and uh, a rip, you know that turnover of officers where we have new folks who are going to serve as elders on session and new folks who are going to serve as deacons as well so the nominating committee is going to be asking those people you know asking people for those those slots as well so once again i'm just going to say prayerfully consider that i know i just told you to take a rest i know i know I got more than one priority in mind at any given time. Um, so, you know, please, please remember that balance. But if, if nominating folks come to you and, and ask you to, to serve as a, a deacon or to serve on session this upcoming year, please prayerfully consider. You don't immediately have to say yes. You don't immediately have to say no. But please prayerfully consider that. Uh, because we need your service and we need your leadership. Every, every year is important in the life of the church, uh, but these next couple of years are important because we'll be in transition uh, in the pastoral leadership uh, position as well. So please, just that's all I'm going to ask. Just prayerfully consider uh, what God is calling you to do, and maybe God is calling you to serve uh, as one of our officers in the coming years. That's it. The Lord has indeed blessed us richly. Let us give cheerfully what we have for the upkeep and the uplift of God's kingdom.
Almighty God, whether we have given from abundance, abundance or from little, we humbly offer these gifts to you for the glory of your name through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you. You may be seated. You beat me to it. This is a time in our service where we share our joys and concerns and we pray together as a people of God. I have got a pink card here that shows a joy to share. It's from Pam Holt who says, great grandson, uh, Oliver, thank you. It's Oliver's first birthday, so that's fantastic. Um, Diane, do we have any from uh, Zoom this morning? Carrie, there are no concerns that were expressed this morning, nor were there no joys. All right, thank you. Makes things simpler, doesn't it? We give thanks to God for these blessings. There are several concerns uh, that have been handed to me, uh, and I've got an additional one as well. Uh, Dory and Rick would uh, pray for healing for Thomas, who's recovering from an appendectomy. Um, and then two re, uh, referring to Josh Whitehurst, uh, who is um, in pain from a bone growth in his uh, stump, uh, going to Evansville Wednesday, and may need surgery to remove the growth. So that's from Sarah and from Phyllis. And then um, Merritt, Bill has let me know that Merritt is back in the hospital uh, and is being tested, but is doing well uh, and hopes to be home soon. So. And, and we would be remiss not to talk about, you know, the... Um, the election, oh, and then all the further I will go into it is that, uh, you know, for some people, this is a time of um, rejoicing, great, great uh, happiness. And for other folks, it's a time of, you know, brokenness and even despair. And I certainly pray that we can find a way to bridge the polarizing divide that seems to exist between us and Perhaps it, it's looking back through rose-colored glasses to think of a time when we could pull together as, as, as a nation and work for the greater good all the time. And okay, if, if, if that's rose-colored looking back, then maybe that's just the future we should be working towards. So anyway, I'm going to lift all of us up as a prayer concern. For all these people and all who are in need, God inspires us to pray, hears our prayers, and answers our prayers. Alleluia, amen, let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, we lift up one another this day, and we lift up our neighbors and our fellow citizens and the creatures of this world. And we know, we know that you are with us. We know that your, your presence through the Holy Spirit never dissipates. You're always with us. And yet there are times when we need that reassurance to feel that presence. I think this is one of those times. So strengthen our faith, heal us of the brokenness we feel, inspire us to be sharers of your love and compassion in this world. We take time now to open ourselves more fully, our hearts, our minds, our spirits, to you. And pray, Lord, that you will hear the prayers of the people.
Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Once again, if you're comfortably able, please stand and let us all sing verses 3 and 4 of hymn number 625. You may be seated. I was just looking at that picture again, and it does look like a hot air balloon, I must say. <laughs> Announcements. Today is the deadline for you to participate in the spirit of Christmas. We thank everyone who's contributed to this project. If you would like to be a part of the community outreach, please make a check payable to the church with the spirit of Christmas on the memo line. Put it in the offering plate. Um, speaking of, of thanking those who've contributed, um, I don't have any numbers in front of me, but I ha have been told by people who know that uh, the pledge, uh, your, your pledge giving for 2025 has been, again, outstanding. And we thank you for your generosity. So. Reminder from the Green Guardians, take your flexible plastics to the drop-off at Schnucks West Door or to Kohl's. Um, these, are, these are plastics that are recycled into Trex building materials. Thank you for helping in small ways. Presbyterian women meet on Tuesday, the 19th at 1 p.m. Uh, dinner group is meeting Thursday the 21st at 5.30 at St. Nicholas Brewing Company. All right, um, I think that's it. So. Um, again, thank you for your participation in our service this morning. Here now our blessing, we'll listen to our postlude, and then our fellowship time begins in the fellowship hall. May the Lord continue to be a restorer of life and watch over you as we witness God's blessings. Amen. <laughs>